And we back with the third episode of the Mayor's oh Office Show. This time, we're in the streets of New York looking no. for more mayors. Mayor? That's right, mayors. So come with me as I journey through the barrels and take a huge bite of the Big Apple. Let's go. Doing, brother. What's up, what's up? Where we are? We're in New York. Cool, man. Tell me what's your name, what it is that you do, and where we're at right now. We're in New York right now. My name is Kesh. I do photography for a living right now. This is my passion. My name is Pony Boy. I am a stylist here at Fried Rice. And my name is Jazz, and I'm also a stylist slash store manager here at Fried Rice. I'm Michael uh, from New York. We are in Hudson Yards in Manhattan. Might as well, I'm a data analyst for a small tech company. I am Monica Shravastav. I am an artist and we are standing in my studio at Pratt Institute during my MFA. I am Vaughn. I'm a photographer here in New York. My name is Rich Fazo from New York City. Well, I live in New York City and um, I'm a DJ. My name is Kini Spoo, founder of Africa's number one soft brand, slowly becoming the globe's number one soft brand. We're in New York. We're at Joe's Pizza. We're getting the classic cheese combo. So, I can't complain. Tell me, what is it that you do here? You invited us to a pay days ago. I, I manage theater shows. So I'm working, I'm working on Broadway. In between, between the office and the you know finances, and also managing people in the theater. I just like to try different foods. I think sharing food is a really interesting way of sharing a culture. So especially when you have different cuisines from different countries. New York is the city of dreams for a reason. Because look around, look. I have a camera in my hand. I'm hustling. Look at that lady. She got food out there. She's hustling. Look at that guy. 360. Everyone's hustling out here. It's city of dreams for a reason. I came from India when I was 18. I didn't know no one. I just pulled up in the city and I'm here. I'm 25, seven years living here. And I'm still hustling. Love it. Tell me about your work. There's a lot of you in the background. <laughs> yes. Um, I think the best way that I've come to explain it is a negotiation of belonging. Um, so the patterns in the background come from Indian textiles and then there's my face with um, these psychological colors uh, blending American aesthetics and Indian aesthetics all in one. You don't want to compose all these playlists for those kids so? Uh, the kids goes. Uh, so you've grown this thing here on the vibes, you know where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. How did you get introduced to it and how are people feeling at this? Man, I'm coming to New York right now in Brooklyn, that shit is going crazy right now. Everybody loves my piano, man. But I'm a piano in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn right now and in New York right now it's been going stupid, crazy. You know what I mean? So, but when you go to the clubs in Brooklyn, that's the most sexiest vibe you're going to hear right now. We just talk about American identity and how it informs how people look at you and how you look at yourself. Um, what's your experience with that? Uh, it's really complicated and it, I think there's a lot of anger in it because I can't be either Asian or Indian and I can't be American. I have to be both all the time and that means being neither. <laughs> if you would change anything for the positive in that space, what would it be? The thing I would try to do is to make it more equitable in terms of spreading information about how to break into the industry. Um, because it really is about who you know um, and no amount of training, no amount of credentials can replace that. So schooling won't help, nothing will help except knowing people. My name is Kini Spoo, founder of Africa's number one sock brand, slowly becoming the globe's number one sock brand. We're out here in Soho, or oh, you said no though. No woe. <laughs> when so, let's put it like that, just planting some seeds in the US. Over the past 24 months, I've been in, in between three cities, New York, Los Angeles, and, and, and Joburg, because I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to graduate from Joburg. You know? I feel like I've been in the city for um, longer than I have to be, and it's time for me to go get other influences you know, from the people across the world. Because if you're building a global brand, 
and you want to speak to a global audience, you need to consume what they consume. I've been doing largely um, a lot of research, but also I've been going around with a bank that cares about the dreams and aspirations of its uh, clients, which is Standard Bank. So we're doing a lot of work, work with the Recording Academy, um, which is our first big major partnership in the US, you know, with the legendary um, Grammy Awards that have been around for 65 years. So for a small brand like mine to align themselves with the Grammys, I think it's it's a great intro to, to the US market. Okay. Your charm, does it work in this side as much as it works that side? Uh, charm is charm. You know, it, it it's not a, you don't have a Zulu charm or a, a, a North charm or whatever it is. Charm is charm. I think I've always, from a very young age, since high school, I knew that speaking a certain way, having an upbeat energy and presenting things in a in a in a in a peculiar way can can get you to win. So yeah, I think my charm is is kinda winning in the US and I was made for the US. How you feeling about being in the city? I know you're not from here. I've been here for eight months. I love it. It's it's a unique experience unlike anything else I've ever been to. I'm from Cali. Last time we met we met in Long Beach and now we're out here in New York. Tell me, man, what is it that you're doing here? I'm raising equity and debt, so I finance buildings. So, you know, little by little, I'm making my way to the top, hopefully. My short-term dream is to establish myself uh, personally within the fashion world and kind of gain respect and understanding of who I am. I make music. Um, I already have like a platform established for myself in terms of like rapping and um, what I do. I pretty much have gotten to my short term dream that was to come out here and like start working and like build my life. Short term dreams to put on a great thesis show. Short term is to go to South Africa. My short term goals is trying to just settle in, you know, get my body to uh, understand how this place works and functions. Short term, make myself situated, make sure I have everything taken care of, have my people, you know, make sure everything's taken care of, what I need to do. Long term dream is to just feel content, whatever I end up doing. I feel like I'm somewhat of a nomadic like energy, so I like to kind of travel, experience new things, incorporate new things. I would definitely want to be um, a songwriter and write for people. Yeah, um, long term, you know, keep it simple. Have a family, get a house, live the quiet life. Long term dreams, uh, that someone can connect with the work in a way that gives the work and the person justice. In the long term, I think I'm using the same strategy I used in, in, in South Africa, you know. I, I want to partner with one of the largest retailers this side and take over the U.S. Long term, hopefully build uh, generational wealth that I can leave to people who, who are here after me. Long term is also to go to South Africa for longer to go play on my piano. I want to go to South Africa and play on my piano, live the culture, enjoy the culture, and bring the energy back to New York and around the world, man. We're going to take the energy all over. I'm a piano to the world, baby. Five degrees. Five degrees. Truly. I always ask this to people, mm. everyone. If you were mayor of anything or anywhere, what or where would it be? I feel like I would want to incorporate a position of power in a school just to like really reiterate the importance of the arts because without it, a lot of things wouldn't have been documented historically or things of that nature. And like a lot of people wouldn't be able to express themselves with the needed resources. So if I was to be like the mayor or in a position of power, I would allow more opportunities for people as they're younger to expand themselves, but not being forced into a career, which what is what it normally feels like, like genuinely just going with the flow of what works for you, even if you're a kid. Mayor of music. Just get people more excited about like learning an instrument, um, getting resources to let people get more into like performing. So, mayor of life. <laughs> mayor, like, of mayor of life. Yeah. Mayor, of, mayor of black lives. Oh, that's tough. I'll be a mayor in New York City. It's the greatest city in the world. You know what I mean? So, yeah. 
Why? Because you can change a lot of things, and also I love this city. You know what I mean? And it's the greatest city in the world. Can't go wrong. In order to like change a, a certain industry, I would change um, probably art in general to make it more more like a traditional industry. If I was a mayor, I would make sure the city is way cleaner than what it is right now. And there's like lesser crime. So more people move here and know how the city is. Like this city is beautiful, but sometimes it gets covered with the dirt. So if I was a mayor, I would remove the dirt and make sure it's clean. If I was a mayor, I'd be the mayor of the world. And my portfolio would probably be finance. Um, and my the first thing I do is maybe give a, a million uh, to each black person um, because the only thing we need right now is money and let's talk you know we have a lot of incredible ideas that needs to be financed so the first thing I do as mayor on my first day of office is to just to give every black person a million or just try to strengthen the communities in low-income areas and hopefully try to Try to help people who are less fortunate. That'd be like, that'd be the thing I do. I would just tackle homelessness. I feel like one deserves a place to live. Love it. Art and, and the tech world is so completely different on how to get funding, how to uh, market yourself well. There are no like strict, easy lines in order to get there. But as a person in tech, you kind of know what to do in order to be successful. For sure. So there are so many people who are overly qualified for the jobs that they're in, who are so talented at what they do, but they have no direction. And so to give somebody that direction is would only, would only make better art, honestly, um, because it's a more democratic type of way to create and make money and make a living at doing what you love. Mayor of um, the immigrant aesthetic. I think that's what it is. And I think that's what the work is trying to resolve. And I think that there's such a, a yearning for immigrants to finally have personhood.